my channel. I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Luo Kong stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Luo Kong is a spatial services company, as well as a leading provider of LBS and HT maps. LBS stands for Location Based Services. It established holographic spatial systems for autonomous driving, natural resources, and LBS smart industry applications for mobile, internet, smart travel, emergency rescue, and much more. On September 16th of this year, the company announced a partnership with Microsoft. It will work with Microsoft to provide auto manufacturers with services including the collection, storage, analysis, management, and simulation testing of autonomous driving data. All of this data will assist automakers in the implementation of autonomous driving technology in China. Luo Kong has already obtained service contracts from a European car manufacturer and a US car manufacturer. These contracts are expected to be implemented in the coming months. Chinese stocks have really struggled the past few months, mainly due to the Chinese government's regulations. Now with the looming bankruptcy of property giant Evergrande, things will only get worse for Chinese companies. Just something to consider when investing in a Chinese-based company like this. The company is headquartered in Beijing, China and was founded in 2009. It started trading in 2019 and can be found on the NASDAQ. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 440 million market cap. They're trading at 124 a share and they have 355 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow each year since they don't have much revenue coming in. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative each year. Revenue is a sales for the company and that goes down every year from 26 million down to 18 million in 2020. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. So that doesn't look good because it goes from 26 million down to 18 million in 2020. But according to the company's website, there was a press release. They generated 38 million of revenue in the first half of 2021. That's more revenue than 2019 and 2020 combined. So things are looking up for this company. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue give you your gross profit. And that is positive each year. Below that is operating expenses. SG&A is their main operating expense. That's usually marketing and payroll. They also spend in research and development every year. They do have negative operating income every year. And they've been adding debt the past few years. So they paid 3.6 million of interest on their debt. And they do have negative net income every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. And they have negative operating cash flow each year since they're not bringing in a lot of revenue. And they do spend in CapEx, but very little. And they're a technology company, so most of their expenses are in R&D. They don't really have to build products and put them together in a factory. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they do have negative free cash flow each year, so they're funding their business on debt and stock. They raised 7 million of debt in 2018, 22 million in 2019, and another 22 million in 2020. They've also been adding stock. When they IPO, they raised $12 million in 2019. They raised another $10 million in 2020. And just a few days ago, they sold 27 million shares of common stock and 13.7 million shares of warrants. They sold these warrants for $1.20 each, and they raised $33 million from the shares and warrants. The exercise price for the warrants is $1.60. So any time within the next three years, the owner of the warrant can pay $1.60 for the stock. So today they wouldn't buy the stock because it's below $1.60. But say the company announced they had this huge contract with Tesla and the stock went up to $10 overnight. If you hold this warrant, all you have to do is pay $1.60 and you get a $10 stock. I think of warrants as long dated options because options usually have an expiration date within two years. Warrants can go even longer than that. They can go three years, five years, 10 years. But warrants are only issued by the company where options are sold in the open market. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 53 million of equity. They raised 165 million from selling their business and they lost 113 million from running their business. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 53 million of equity, 44 million of debt. They're 55% equity, 45% debt. 
and their weighted average cost of capital is 9.6%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 870 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $618 million. We divide that by 355 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 174. They're trading at 124, so they're trading at a 29% discount. It is a buy according to the model. It's really difficult to value this company because I didn't find any other valuations from other analysts. Plus, there's not too much information on the company's website. The company said their revenue was $38 million in the first half of 2021. I doubled that, so I estimated their revenue would be $76 million in 2021. And this is a really big market. Autonomous cars are huge. And it's not just autonomous cars. If you could put their technology in regular cars, cars that we drive every day, it could help us avoid accidents. And especially if it's dark out, it might see things that we don't see and it could stop the car or tell us what's going to happen. Not to mention all the other industries it could help. It could help firemen when they drive fire trucks. It could help the police. Because the faster you drive, the higher the chance of an accident happening. So I doubled their revenue each year until 2024. I'm not sure if this is too aggressive, but I know there is possibility for them to get that revenue and much, much more. And I gave them negative free cash flow in 21, 22, and 23. And the way I calculated their 2024 free cash flow, I took 10% of their revenue because the average company converts 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. This is where the stock has been trading since 2019. But anytime you read about a company, it always sounds like they have the best new thing and their stocks get a 5x, 10x, 20x. It always sounds amazing and it sounds like they have the best management team. But every company conveys the best information to the investor. Only the financials tell all. And in 2019 and 2020, I'm sure investors in this stock were also looking at the company and saying this is amazing. But look what the stock has done. It was well over $10 in 2019 when they first IPO'd. And now it's down to $1.24. And at one point, it was below $0.40. Cents. So the stock really hasn't done too much. So you just always have to remember, these penny stocks are super risky. There's a much better chance of you losing all your money than you getting a 1,000% return. The stock isn't too volatile. It has a beta of 0.76. It is up 170% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 is up only 33%. The 52-week low was below $0.40, cents and it got close to $4 at one point. But the stock is on a decline now, trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is a really popular stock. 18 million shares are traded on average the past 10 days. Of the 355 million shares outstanding, 190 million are on float. Only 4% are held by institutions, and 4% of the shares on float are shorted. In 2019, they had about 120 employees, and at the end of 2020, they have 180. I don't know how many employees they have now, but the fact that they hired 60 new people is a positive sign. The biggest shareholder is Bravo First Development. Never heard of this company. They own 6% of the stock, then Plenty Prestige, Benjamin Family Trust, and the CEO and chairman of the company owns 3% of the stock. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at a PE since they have negative net income. They have a really bad price to sales ratio of 24, but this is based off of their 2020 revenue number, which was 18 million. They had 36 million in the first half of 2021. So their price to sales would be much better in the trailing 12 months. And they have an 8.4 price to book ratio. And the way you calculate price to book is stock price over book value per share. And to calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is on a balance sheet. It's assets minus liabilities. They have 53 million of equity, negative 2 million of tangible equity, since they have 55 million of intangibles on their balance sheet. A company gets intangibles on its balance sheet when they acquire other companies. They have a really low current ratio of 0.2. They can only cover 20% of their current liabilities with their current assets. They only have 72,000 of cash on their balance sheet and 4 million of receivables. They did recently raise $33 million, but it looks like they're still going to be short because they had negative 16 million of free cash flow in 2020 and they have negative 62 million of working capital. So they're gonna to need to raise more money to pay their expenses that are due over the next 12 months. This is concerning because if a company has a current ratio below one and they have negative free cash flow, that's a big red flag. If we were looking at Coca-Cola for instance and they had a current ratio of 0.2, I wouldn't care because Coca-Cola could wait a week or two and another five or 10 billion of cash rolls in from all the sales, and they can use that cash to pay their bills. 
but this company has no profits. Their expenses are higher than their revenue. It is possible if they can't get funding, they'll be forced into bankruptcy. I guess it is possible they get acquired because they do have a lot of patents. And I think they have specialized software that's pretty valuable. But if their patents and their software were so valuable, you would think they'd be generating at least a good amount of revenue where they could cover their expenses. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 19 companies in the same industry as Luokong. They obviously don't have good ratios because they're not bringing much revenue. It is surprising they have 45% debt, which is worse than average. Generally, a company that's not bringing in much revenue doesn't usually have much debt. The reason is, is because they have to pay such a high interest rate on the debt because they're a big credit risk. If Microsoft wanted a billion dollars of debt, they would only pay 2 or 3% because it's almost like a risk-free investment for the person lending them money. But when a bank or investor lends this company money, it's pretty risky because they don't have any cash coming in. The small amount of revenue that does come in is being absorbed by their expenses. So they're probably paying between 9 and 11% interest on their debt. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 29% discount. But even if you have a good product, or at least you think it's a good product, it doesn't mean anything until you can generate revenue. And at this point, they haven't generated much revenue. But there does seem to be hope because they've linked up with Microsoft. They've also hooked up with a couple of car manufacturers. So if things go well, hopefully revenue starts rolling in. So the technology sounds great. Let's just see what they do with it. I rank their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.